It's 5 a.m. and we've been invited to join a group of pregnant women who are gathering to travel to New Mexico to access legal abortion. All of them are more than six weeks pregnant and under state law cannot access legal abortion in Texas. These women have agreed to let us follow their journey if we hide their identities at the start. God loves you. You have dignity and worth. Your life is the priority here. And so if you're surprised that a person of faith like me is standing in front of you saying that, that's a good thing. The church isn't here to like convert you or do anything weird, right? We're just here because service is our prayer. The mood in the room is tense, and most of the women are women of color who appear to be in their 20s. In partnership with an abortion clinic and a sister organization in New Mexico, Reverend Cantor helps facilitate a one-day trip to Albuquerque where these women will have abortions. We don't believe that you are sinful. We don't believe any shame about this. We believe you should have the right to decide if, when, and with whom you have a, a child. We want to say to you today that people of faith are also in support of abortion. The trip is subsidized, and all of these women qualify because they're eligible for Medicaid in Texas. After many conversations about sensitivity and confidentiality, we're allowed to join these women on their journey. There's a full 17-hour day ahead that includes a plane ride to and from Albuquerque, 650 miles away. This is the first time cameras have been allowed on the trip. That one's you, right? Okay, cool. When we arrive, 15 women are shuttled back and forth from an abortion clinic. They'll either have a surgical abortion or receive the abortion pill. At the offices of the New Mexico Religious Coalition for Reproductive Choice, we're allowed to sit in the waiting room to see if one of the women will share her story with us on camera. I have a five-year-old, a four-year-old, and then a six-month-old. Walk me through kind of what goes through your mind after you found out. Um, I was scared. I was in panic. I suffer with anxiety, so like my anxiety kind of like spiked and I kind of hyperventilated myself from getting so anxious from finding out the news. When I went, they told me I was six and a half weeks. I didn't want to have two children kind of under the age of one again, you know, with the shortage of Similac, having to do like either WIC or food stamps, not being able to financially like even support or even make enough to feed another mouth. What would you have done if you couldn't come to New Mexico for an abortion? God, who knows, because I was already asking people like, hey, what could I do? I've known some women to just kind of take it into their own hands and do like their own abortion. Like I had a friend tell me she drank a cap of bleach, you know. I had another woman tell me, girl, like just take a whole bunch of vitamin C. So yeah, it is pretty scary the length that, you know, some of the women will go to to abort because obviously they're scared. It's your life. If you're not ready, you're not ready and no one should force you to be ready. The New Mexico Religious Coalition for Reproductive Choice pays for the women's plane tickets and handles all of the logistics once the women arrive in New Mexico. For most people in Texas, Albuquerque is one of the closest locations. We started our plane trips December of last year, 2021. It was kind of our reaction to Senate Bill 8 and we have been doing a trip from Dallas every other week since then. I fear that when the Supreme Court does make a decision that access will be limited for almost half of our country and the clinics that will remain open, we just won't be able to help everyone that's needing the help. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, 26 states will either ban or severely restrict access to abortion meaning the hundreds of thousands of women who seek abortions every year will now have to travel out of state to legally end their pregnancies. 
I found out last week that um, there was like a heartbeat in the sonogram and I was just like really hard on myself because I was like, I waited too late. I should have been more on it. Desiree is 22 years old and this is the first time she's been pregnant. She told me it was hard to figure out where to go for help. At first, she mistakenly went to a crisis pregnancy center, one of about 200 in Texas that exist to dissuade women from having abortions. She says the counselor encouraged her not to get a sonogram, a delay that ultimately put her past the six-week deadline for abortions in Texas. She said, well, based on what you've told us, it sounds like you're only four, four weeks and something days. And um, she's like, so it's still way too early to do a sonogram. And then she just was like talking to me about, are you sure that you want to you know, have an abortion. And she kept asking that question, I think, like, so many times. I was just like, I I don't want to have a kid, though. Like, I'm mentally not there physically. I can't. Um, And I'm trying to go back to college this fall. So it was like, it wouldn't work out. Eventually, Desiree was able to get an appointment at Southwestern Women's Surgery Center in Dallas. There, she learned she was one or two days past the cutoff and would have to travel out of state to have an abortion. Can you tell me a little bit about your own personal history and how that factored into the decision? I know you were talking about your siblings earlier. Well, there's six of us, but I'm the oldest out of everyone. And my mom, she was also like doing drugs. And sometimes she would just leave me and my other brother, who's a year younger than me, like home alone. And we would have to just take care of my little siblings and like figure it out and like wonder when she would come back. Going through that, At such a young age, it's like, damn, I don't know if I want kids. (laughs) Like, there's a lot of things that are like behind closed doors that people go through. It's not just about having a kid. People who are trying to fight this will really ever understand something like that. A few days before the journey to New Mexico, I spoke with the medical director at the Dallas Abortion Clinic where the women were pre-screened for the trip. Come on in, let me show you around. Thank you. Six weeks is incredibly fast. Many patients don't even know that they're pregnant. They don't exhibit any symptoms of pregnancy. Also some of the patients that I've seen since September 1st who I've had to turn away personally. A patient who was diagnosed with a lethal fetal anomaly, who was forced to carry that pregnancy until its own demise. A patient who was in a violent relationship with her partner, realized that she was pregnant, was eligible for having an abortion under the restrictive SB-8, but needed more time to decide whether or not she actually wanted to have that abortion. A 15-year-old who was the daughter of an undocumented immigrant who had been raped by a family member who was ineligible, and her mother couldn't travel with her out of state in order to obtain that care. Those are very, very few examples of thousands of women and people who are pregnant right now who I have personally had to turn away that we've all had to turn away during this time. This is no longer going to be a Texas issue. We're no longer going to be able to see 50% of the patients. It's going to be 0% of patients. Nobody's ready for that. But we're gonna keep fighting. We're gonna do everything that we can up until the minute that someone tells us we can't. And if we aren't able to provide abortion services directly to patients in Texas, we will help them get that care in other states.